So Joe Biden is, he says it's time for Americans to get back to work and fill our great downtowns again instead of working from home. What? Why? <laughs> why would you want people to get in their cars and sit in rush hour traffic in the middle of an oil embargo? Why would you want to do that? The gas prices are going through the roof because this guy just put an oil embargo on Russia. Because why? Because he's corrupt and overthrew the government in Ukraine and they want to stop a pipeline that's going from Russia directly to Germany. Russia already provides 30% of all the energy needs to Europe and that's too much for this guy and the oligarchs here in the United States. So they overthrew the government and uh and now they're uh they got a hot war going with Russia. They just uh, they're sending 10 billion dollars in uh missiles. Billion. 20 billion would end homelessness in the United States. They're sending 10 billion like that to Ukraine, a place nobody uh could pick out on a map. Uh, other prominent Democratic politicians, such as New York City Mayor Eric Adams, have come out against indefinite remote work. Wow. He's come out? <laughs> what the F? <laughs> if, <laughs> was it that shameful to be against in, in, <laughs> indefinite remote work before? It's very brave of him he's coming out. I think it's very brave. We should have a coming out party. Very brave. So that's the mayor of air. He, he has come out against indefinite remote work. So they want people to get back in their cars and start uh, burning oil. Adams said, New Yorkers can stay home in your pajamas all day while Democratic governors. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> Adams said, New Yorkers can't stay home <laughs> in your pajamas all day while Democratic governors have broadly sought to roll back mask mandates and encourage their urban workforces to return to downtown business districts, many of which have been hit hard by the lack of foot traffic to local businesses. Uh, boy, that's quite a turnaround from <laughs> stay home in your pajamas indefinitely. Because <laughs> that's what it was. Now they're saying they can't. Um, this is from the American Prospect. Why is Biden pushing people back to the office? How about converting our depopulated downtowns into affordable housing instead? This is from Dave Dayan. Dave Dayan, not for forced to vote on Medicare for All, but he was for forced to vote on $15 minimum wage. It's funny how people pick and choose their issues, huh? I guess he already has health care. <laughs> so this is... Uh, yeah, so this... Here we go. Hang on, hang on where am I? Uh, one of the more awkward lines in President Biden's State of the Union address involved returning to pre-COVID status quo. Though he highlighted perhaps the least desirable aspect of that, the slog through a rush hour commute to a box with four walls and apprehensive co-workers. It's time for America to get back to work and fill our great downtowns again with people, Biden said. People working from home can feel safe and begin to return to their offices. It didn't draw the bipartisan applause speechwriters may have expected. <laughs> wow. I love how when propaganda changes so hard on a dime, it gives the propagandized whiplash. Because that's what that is. <laughs> wow. It went from you got to stay home and wear a mask or you're going to kill grandma to everybody get out there. Start breathing on each other. <laughs> Stat. <laughs> Inhaling saliva all day, I believe. That's was right. One. That's why that was. <laughs> Biden's eat your peas and get back to the office appeal was part of his campaign to highlight his administration's COVID success. Now, if you don't know, that writing is not the best. It's, uh, it's there used to be a phrase called eat your peas and carrots, and that's what he's referring to. It's called it's kind of like take your medicine and get back to the office. So that's what he means by that. Eat your peas, in case you didn't know what the hell that meant. Which it's guessing. the dashes. There should have been those dashes between all the get back to office part. Yeah, I know. Uh, and there's certainly a logic to showing off that success through the spectacle of crowded downtowns, full restaurants, and a return to the rhythms of pre-pandemic life. Uh, so when he says, eat your peas and get back to the office appeal, 
Don't you mean eat shit and die appeal? Because that's what I think. <laughs> I think that's what he means. Uh, Biden, but many Americans find restoring those rhythms distasteful after getting hours of their life back daily through working from home. Uh, I mean, seeing as they've been whipped into a fury, perhaps more immediately important, the return to normal has been disrupted by a new normal from the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And the worst thing you could possibly do amid the subsequent energy shock and gas price spike is to tell millions of people to jump back in their cars and sit in traffic five days a week. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, yeah, and also after calling truckers Nazis, telling them we got to help some Nazis probably doesn't help either. I'm killing, they don't tell them that part. <laughs> they just called a bunch of truckers Nazis, and now we're literally arming Nazis in Ukraine, just so you know. Which begs the question of why the administration is stressing returning to the office right now. What do they know about the looming collapse of central business districts, about the erosion of municipal tax base, about looming commercial real estate failures? And if this is part of their calculus, shouldn't we be informed about it? And shouldn't cities be given the opportunity to come up with some better solutions than making people commute and sit in fucking traffic all goddamn day? Given $130 a barrel oil, it's extremely unclear that any public official should be endorsing more car usage, especially at a time when stressed mass transit budgets have made it less possible to quickly get into many downtowns without driving. Returning to these commuting patterns are an option, not, not a necessity, and they're certainly not something that any American relishes. Yeah, the... I the irony has grown, grown more than gas prices. <laughs> By contrast, maintaining telework and even increasing options for it would be a strong part of any agenda to reduce fuel consumption and regain some semblance of energy security. Even small reductions in demand when supply is constrained can ease prices, and it would also reduce congestion for those who don't have the choice of not commuting, thereby benefiting almost everyone with some connection to downtown employment. <laughs> <laughs> at a minimum presidents governors and mayors sounding like a foreman yelling back to work at their constituents is unsavory <laughs> 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 that's such a way to put it <laughs> in the current circumstance it's counterproductive it also misses the potential real gains to quali to quality of life by reimagining downtowns Going back to normal isn't something everyone wants, and right now, it isn't even going to happen. A new normal is possible and desirable. I, I like the message of get back to work after mandating a bunch of people can't work. <laughs> oh, you didn't get your vax, you're fired. 72,000 people in New York. Just like that. Well, thank God we're not like the Russia, am I right? Come on. <laughs> So there you go, uh, Dave Day and making some good points there with his, uh, you know, you got to take your peas and read his column, but uh, it's still there's something there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's such a, such a nitpick on my part. Uh, so there you go. Get back to work. Burn more oil. You, you fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> hey we've got more dates for our 2022 stand-up tour we're going everywhere we're going to dallas houston florida we're going to omaha des moines pittsburgh columbus ohio and los angeles go to jimmydorkami.com for a link for all the tickets for all our shows mm -hmm.